The Kramer family lived in Darien, Illinois, USA. Jeffrey Kramer owned his own car repair company. He married Lori in 1980 and they had three children. Anthony, Angela, and Michael. They were like any normal, traditional American family, until that fateful day came. Distress Call On March 2, 2010, police received a phone call at 3.10 a.m. from a girl they said was Angela Kramer, who was 25 years old at the time. The girl's voice was whispery, frightened and terrified when she said, I am at home, they are shooting. She was listening to them while hiding in the closet of her parents' house. The police arrived and saw a man climbing out of the basement window. He introduced himself as Anthony Kramer, the eldest son in the family, who was sleeping in the basement. He told police he heard gunshots and didn't know who was inside the house. Police entered the front door of the house, found a male deceased on the first floor and a female found deceased on the stairs. The third victim and another male were found near the garage. He had shot them several times in the head and body. Police found Angela locked in her closet, and there was no sign of any intruders. They were taken out of the house. The victims were the parents, Jeffrey and Lori, and the youngest son, Michael, who was 20 years old. Crime Scene At the time of the shooting police learned that Michael Kramer's girlfriend was at the home with him. The witness said that she and Michael were watching television on the sofa in the living room when they heard a loud commotion and noise immediately before the shooting. The girl was able to give police a description of the shooter. She said he was dressed all in black, and that it was only one person. Crime scene investigators found a broken window in the home. There was a hammer beside her. They also found several .40 caliber shell casings and found bullet holes in the walls. According to preliminary investigations, it is believed that Jeffrey came down the stairs to confront the shooter, and was shot first. His wife, Lori, follows him down the stairs and is injured midway up the stairs. I am Michael. He was in a struggle with the criminal, as he threw knives and objects at him and tried to leave the house, but ended up in a room near the garage. Police suspected the crimes were robbery, but no valuables were missing from the house. The prime suspect in the Kramer family murder. That morning, the police met Angela and Anthony, who were broken down and in disbelief at what they were going through. Anthony confirmed that he was in the basement and asleep when the shooting started. He said he hid behind a pool table, and climbed out a window when he thought it was safe. As for Angela, she was asked if she knew anyone who wanted to harm her family. She told police that she had just separated from her son's father, Johnny Borisov, after Christmas. After asking about how good a person he was, she said that he had issues with managing his anger, and she also left him because he didn't love her family. Angela and Johnny dated for about two years, and had a son in 2009. They then moved in together. But Johnny became possessive and tried to isolate Angela from her family. Angela stated that Johnny had threatened her family several times, especially over the past few months. She told a story that happened about a year ago. She said that the first baby shower date was supposed to be an event for all women. But Johnny did not like this idea and did not allow her mother to hold their son. He sat in the corner carrying their son the whole time, in the middle of that crowd of women. After that, she had had enough and decided to leave and the custody issues began. Johnny did not want to pay child support and wanted full custody. That same day, Johnny called 911 and said his girlfriend's house had been shot up and that he had seen it on the news. He agreed to go to the police station voluntarily. He told them that he still had feelings for Angela and was worried about her death. Police asked him where he was the day before, and he said he had been at the casino all night. The police found footage from the casino surveillance camera. They found that he entered around 10 p.m. and left around 4 a.m. However, despite this, he was not excluded from involvement in the crime. 
He may have known the shooter, so he was detained at the police station. At around 11 p.m. Johnny was talking on his phone in the interrogation room several times. The police obtained a search warrant to search him. There was one number he tried to call several times after the Kramer family was killed. The call came from a prepaid phone. And the caller left a voicemail for Johnny several hours after the murders. He said it was Jake and he was going to have to get rid of that phone soon, and that he was being followed by several black SUVs. The Chase Jacob had no criminal history, so police tried to call his phone, but when there was no answer they turned to his grandfather. But they did not believe Jacob was involved, his grandmother said she had gone out to dinner with him 72 hours before the Kramers were killed. They described him as a decent person, and he lived in a religious family. But he was suffering from depression, suicidal tendencies, and used sedative medications. After searching several databases, police learned that Jacob had purchased a .40 caliber Glock rifle. This was just days before the murders. And at a sports store just 20 minutes from Kramer's house. The boy was on the run, so a search warrant was obtained for the phone number associated with his phone. He was tracked heading south to Florida as his family lives there in Florida. On March 3, Florida law enforcement teams arrived at Jacob's parents' home. Jacob was sleeping in a truck outside his parents' house. They knocked on the window and took him into custody. But they found no trace of the murder weapon. Murder Plot Jacob said he was up all night doing drugs. He added that he was afraid of the repercussions if he opened his mouth. He claimed that he and his family were in grave danger if he did so. He said that killing was the only way out of trouble. But the police were finally able to convince the boy with difficulty that his family would be safe if he told them the truth. So he was convinced and began to tell them the details of what happened. Jacob said Johnny became his friend in the summer of 2009 when he was fighting his custody battle with Angela. Johnny had given him a place to stay when he was kicked out of his apartment. He continued that Johnny was a very scary person, as he was part of a gang that sold drugs. He had friends who were very violent. Johnny tells him that Angela knows a lot about the gang members and their activities. She threatened to go to the police, so he must help him silence the Kramer family forever. They will all be involved, including Jacob himself. Jacob said that he believed everything he told him, and since he was his friend, he rushed to help him despite the seriousness of the matter. He also told him that there were other murders that the gang would carry out that night in the area, and the police would believe that this was among them. But after research and investigation, there was no evidence of murder. Any other murders occur. After Jacob realized that Johnny had deceived him and used him to be his tool for the crime, he decided to tell the police the details. Days before the Kramers were killed, Johnny asked Jacob to buy the gun and gave him the address of the Kramer's home, telling him where the home invasion was taking place. His instructions were specific and clear, which was that the raid would take place on March 2nd at 3 in the morning. Jacob actually set out for Kramer's house after taking a heavy dose of drugs. He used a hammer to break the living room window, and saw Michael and his girlfriend on the couch. Jacob said he shot him and missed, so Michael fled into the kitchen. Meanwhile, the parents, Jeff and Lori, came down the stairs, and he began shooting them several times in the chest and head. Jacob searched for Angela throughout the house, as Johnny had instructed him, but he did not find her, and he did not go to the basement. Rather, he found Anthony in one of the rooms, so he shot him dead. After committing the murders, Jacob walked to his car, which was parked on a street, and headed to Florida, where his family resided. He disposed of the murder weapon in a trash can outside a restaurant. The gun and some clothes were found in the place he indicated. The firearm matched the shell casings found. While Jacob confessed all these details, the police had twelve legal hours remaining to detain Johnny. They needed more evidence than just the boy's story, 
and when they managed to get an extension to detain Johnny, he refused to talk. Verdict in the Kramer Family Murder Case On March 5, Jacob was extradited to Illinois and placed in the same cell as Johnny. Unfortunately for him, the prison cells in Illinois contained microphones to eavesdrop on the prisoners. There, Johnny spoke and began asking Jacob questions about what he had talked to the police about. He also continued to threaten him with the fake gang he had created. On March 6, a day later, Johnny was officially charged with murder. In 2011, Jacob pleaded guilty to the crimes but claimed that he was not sane. Then in 2013, Johnny was put on trial after Jacob agreed to testify. Johnny killed the Kramer family because he hated them so much. He saw that they were the reason for his separation from his girlfriend, Angela, and his son, her staying away from him, and her refusal to return to him again. Jacob was the weapon that Johnny used in the murder of the Kramer family. The latter prepared the boy and incited him to commit crimes. He was sentenced to life imprisonment, but many sympathizers saw that he was a victim as well and did not deserve that unjust sentence against him. Especially since he was mentally corrupted by his actions. Drugs and under threat. What do you think, my dear viewer? Was Jacob a tool and a victim, or did he bear the same burden as his instigator, Johnny? Don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell, and if you like the show, click like.